heard it a lot, haven't we? Islam's religion of peace. Uh, people who talk about jihad and speak about violence in the name of religion are, are distorting, misappropriating something sacred. So all of that's good. Now I wanted to bring it back to something real and relevant. And I hope you'll join me on a little journey as I attempt to do that in the course of the next sort of 35 minutes, hopefully. And then we'll open for Q&A. So, uh, but at any point during this, the talk, feel free. I like to keep things informal. If there's a, something that you would like to comment on or would like to ask about, feel free to, to shout out. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfihu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Innahu man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah, wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah, wa huwa fil akhirati la min al-khasirin. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu na muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, arsaluhu bilhaqi bashira wa manadiran bayna yadayi sa'ah. Man yuti allahu wa rasooluhu faqad faza wa rashada wa ahtada, wa man ya'asihima fa innahu la yadurru illa nafsah. I begin invoking, uh, praising God and invoking peace and blessings and benedictions upon Muhammad, his messenger, and all of his messengers before him. Indeed, guidance comes from God, and we turn to him with open hearts, uh, seeking protection from the evil of ourselves and the wrong of our actions. Islam presents itself when it first does some 14 centuries ago. Not as a new thing, a new uh, religion, so much as a, as a continuation. <laughs> the Prophet is made to say in the Quran, say, I am not a new thing among messengers. I'm not a bid'ah. I'm not an innovation. I haven't just turned up. This is the continuation of the voice of revelation with which, from the dawn of time, God has communicated with humanity. You, the, the, the video, um, Abdul Rahman, was in, who is in it, was, uh, he quoted a verse we've all heard. O humanity, we created you from a single male and female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. In the common ancestry uh, to which we all belong, is the story of really a message of great love and it's a message of great hope and aspiration. And it begins with the creation of a single soul, min nafsin wahida. From a single soul did we create you. And from that soul we made its partner and from them too, batha min kuma rijalin kathiran wa nisa'a, multitudes of men and women. Waja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila. And we made you into nations and we made you into tribes. And so the black and the white and the, uh, the people of the Far East and the people of Central Europe and of every other sh description of shade, of, of, of shape, all of you come from this common parentage. We are taught to remember that in a really powerful way, in, in the beginning of our story. We're told that it's being sons and daughters of Adam. Adam to whom... Uh, whom God creates with his own hands, we are told. Adam, to whom God breathes the soul of life. And Adam, before whom God causes the whole of the angelic realm to fall down prostrate. This is the Quranic narrative of our ancestry, our shared ancestry. This isn't particular, peculiar to Muslims, to Arabs. It applies to every human being, every homo sapien. If you're a human being, then, then this is your ancestry as far as the scriptures are concerned. So, in fact, the word homo sapiens is an interesting word. It means thinking man or wise man. And um, in Arabic, we speak of man being hayawanun natiq, the animal that can communicate through speech. And it is the ability to do what we're doing now, emit air out of your lungs through, squeezed through a contorted muscle called the voice box that creates vibrations in the air that bounce against an eardrum that get recalibrated as electrical signals that create pictures and images and a dynamic uh, scene inside your head that communicates to you whilst I'm standing here blowing through empty space. <coughs> that ability to communicate 
وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها was something that God granted in the first instance to Adam. And he taught to Adam the names of things. So this human being is, is one who's, from his beginnings, is given to inquiry, to wanting to know what things are called, which means what they're about, what their properties are. And this is a reflection of, an effect of, the dynamic spirit that is breathed into man that singles him out from the rest of created things. This is Adam. This is our shared ancestry. And the reason it's relevant, of course, is because it brings us back to a, sh a, a sense of togetherness rather than being apart. <laughs> From this one male and female, all of you emerge of your varying races and ethnicities, your nations and your tribes, your skin colors and your languages, only in order that you may know one another. It's the only function. We're not different because we emerge from different places. Those distinctions are geogra geographic, locational differences to help us identify he's a northerner and she's from down south and this person's from the Middle East and that person's from the Far East. It's, it's a, these are ways that we learn from one another and we share or we learn from a common experience. The Quran then tells us about the story of two sons, two brothers. وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ إِبْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ And relate to them the story of the two sons of Adam. So Adam, the father, and his two sons. I can do this to tune, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to because it's late. So, so Adam, the two sons of Adam. وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ إِبْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ Relate to them the two sons of Adam in truth. إِذْ قَرَّبَ قُرْبَانًا They both offer up a sacrifice to God. فَتَقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحِدِهِمْ وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ Cain and Abel. It's a story that, of course, the scriptures, the Judeo-Christian scriptures, with which we share an ancestry, are familiar. And they both put up a, a, a sacrifice. And it is accepted from the one of them, but not from the other. And what is his response? قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكَ And Cain says to Abel, I will surely slaughter you. I will kill you. I will put you to death. And Abel says, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ For what crime? Because your sacrifice wasn't accepted while mine was. But God only accepts from people who make their offerings with fear and humility, with God consciousness. So maybe you should have thought about addressing your own problem before projecting that onto me. Your own failing, your own weakness. And then he says, لَئِنْ بَسَطْتَ يَدَكَ إِلَيَّ لِتَقْتُولَنِي Now, if you should decide to reach, to stretch out your hand and strike me down dead. مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطٍ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُولَكَ I'm not going to do the same. I won't seek to kill you, to strike you down, to cause your death. إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ Why? For I fear God, Rabb al-Alameen, Lord of all that is, Lord of all the worlds. Life's sacred. Inni uridu an tabu'a bi ithmi wa ithmika fatakuna min ashabin nar. And if you choose to proceed, then you will take my sin and your own sin and be from the people of the fire. Wa dhalika jaza'u dhalimeen. And this is the way that God requites the the unjust. The Quran then says, فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ And yet Cain could not be reasoned with. His, his ego was hurt, his anger, his rage, his passions were stirred. فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ And his soul made the killing of his brother seem good to him. فَقَتَلَهُ And so he struck him dead. فَكَانَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ and he was at that very moment of the losers in the sight of God. And then the Quran says another little, it could have stopped there, but it then makes this other little addendum. And it says, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And then God sent a crow, a crow that was looking for its uh, sustenance in the earth, digging up the earth, looking for a worm. 
فبعث الله غرابا يبحث في الأرض ليريه كيف يواري سوءة أخيه in order to show him this one who was able to strike down his brother how to now dispose of his body how to cover the body of his brother whose blood was on his hands and then he said qala ya waylata and he began to realize he said oh woe is me a'ajaztu an akuna mithla hadha al-ghurab was i able to strike down another and take his life and yet unable to fathom fathom even as this crow kayfa uwadi so ata akhi what to then do with the body of my brother fa asbaha min an nadimin and he was given to great regret this is an interest what is the point of the crow the human beings have the potential for vast harm you can it is within the means of a person to 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 extinguish the flame of life and the flame of life is not any small thing it is the breath of god we're told it is the breath of god because the quran says allazi ahsana kull shay'in khalaqa god everything that he created he made beautiful wa bada'a khalqa al-insani min teen and the creation of man he began with clay or with with earth ثُمَّ جَعَلَ نَسْلَ And then his offspring, you, me, and everybody else around us. مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَهِينٍ From the essence of a lowly drop. ثُمَّ سَوَّاهُ And from that lowly droplet, he made a, uh, he fashioned your forms. وَنَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِهِ And breathed into it of his spirit. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ and suddenly you are hearing and seeing and people of thought and reflection and feeling that came you are animated because of a spark because of a breath death inflicting death upon another is to extinguish that and that is within the means of human beings and yet that same human is can be so ignorant as to need a crow to show him what to then do with this body God mentions this in the Quran and then he says min ajli dhalik and for this reason katabna ala bani israel we ordained to the unto the children of israel annahu man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafs that any that takes a life without it being as just deserts for the committal of murder or fasadin fil ard or some great atrocity throughout the land any that takes the life of an innocent soul fa ka'annama qatala an-nas jami'a it is as though he has not taken a life but the life of the whole of humanity wa man ahyaha and any that is able able to 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 save a life to salvage to rescue a life fa ka'annama ahya an-nas jami'a it's not a life but the lives of the whole of humanity that you have saved. The Quran says nafs. It doesn't say أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا أَوْ مُسْلِمًا The one who kills a Muslim or a believer. It's like he's destroyed the whole of humanity. And the one who saves a Muslim or a believer, he saved. No. The Quran says a soul. And the definition of a soul is that يتنفس, It breathes. The nafs is that which is a hearing, seeing, thinking, feeling human being. It is proof of God's it is proof of God it is proof of the breath of God the presence of God The prophet of God is in Medina sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he's among his companions and we're told that uh, the funeral procession of a Jewish man passes by and God's messenger stands up Imam Muslim narrates this in his sahih it's an authentic hadith he stands up and somebody says janazat yahudiyyin ya rasulullah this isn't uh, the funeral of a muslim that you should stand and show respect but that of a jewish man o messenger of god and his response alaysat nafsan wasn't it was it not a soul was it not a soul was it not a soul that came from god and has now returned to its maker that we stand up to honor its presence and then its departure alaysat nafsan now it's interesting the quran tells us the story of two brothers